Hey everybody, and welcome back once again. My name's Chris Ormy, this is Stardust Order 6, and today we're going to be carrying on this save and just trying to race these horses as much as possible and get them up in rank and in grade races as well, striving towards those three-year-olds achieving a nice run in the Triple Crown this season. And long-term goal, of course, to get horses into the breeding barn and produce some really nice horses to compete online. So without any further ado, we've booked some horses into races and I just need to check the breeding barn, so our race isn't until the 11th, I believe, yes, 11th and the 13th, which should get us at least the first pair bred here. So starboard bow and swizzle. Third time is not the charm. Okay. Fantastic and hidden recipe, however, is a success. So after today's race, we can come back and get a new breeding partner for hidden recipe. But uh, starboard bow having a little bit of issue there, which is kind of interesting. So up today is Hidden Beauty and this is a 5 furlong allowance race. It's a drop down in terms of the uh, distance but there aren't too many at 6 furlongs and Sahara Beauty and Lock Journal all need races at around the same sort of distance so we're having to make adjustments where we can and I still think at an allowance race, five furlongs, it should match up pretty decently. We are favourite, everyone's the same weight, we are top uh, rating. We've won on this ground before, and everything looks decent. Mass matter tips us, and the outsider tips somebody else. I think we've got the best one there. So let's just see what you can do nice and early. So it's a short field. We're on the inside. An RB's token. Which one is that? That's this one in the green and the orange hat at the back of the field. So that's interesting. Let's move on with the race again. Hidden Beauty wants to go to the lead. Can she break away? And a furlong and a half. Yes, she can. Can she stay away? Yes, she can. So that is going to be a nice little win there. Made most readily. I'm okay with that. Stalker. May improve fur over furlong. So it's definitely a six furlong horse. We did know that going in, but as I said, we needed to find a little bit of leeway in what races we can book people in. So let's jump back into the breeding and hidden recipe. A mile two? We could go for a mile two, foible. It's not excitable. That'll make a decent breeding partner, I believe, and... It's always nice to keep those circling round, and you'll see the money goes down throughout the season, even though we're winning races, and some big money races, uh, like 8 million last year for Starboard Princess. But we do spend more than that throughout the year on breeding alone. We do make more money than we spend on breeding from the sales of most of the falls that come through two years later. So it is a money maker. But you do have to wait, and you do have to play it kind of uh, kind of cleverly at the beginning. Not doing too many. So, Grand Sahara. Let's see what they can do. Now, Grand Sahara is actually in a six furlong race. And that's not where we want them to be. They're, they want to be in a seven furlong to a mile now. Their stamina has gone up in the last few days, like three or four days, since we actually booked their race. Is 
a shame because it's too late to put locked journal in that six furlong. And would there be anything? No, there wouldn't be anything for the distance. Um, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, I think, maybe to run this horse as is. Let's just think about this a minute. Is this actually... Okay, so it might be a seven furlong horse instead of a mile, which would be a little closer, of course, to that six furlong. It'll be running grade three. I think it can win that. Um, it's got a lot of speed, so it might be able to handle a little bit of distance. Uh, distance adaptability is low, though. Well, I'm all about testing the horses, so let's just go in and see kind of just see what happens I guess Grand Sahara highest horse highest rated lowest weight always a good combination we should be an are the only horse tipped let's go straight to the post and see what we can get so there's nobody to compete with us really in this field we're on the inside of the rail just behind the leader slowly taking over that lead and I think our difference in quality will more than make up for the distance except Sandusky's gonna go but we're gonna fight for the line and Grand Sahara does win so that's a grade 3 win despite being off distance comfortably two length win trip was ideal so six furlongs okay so it's probably a seven furlong horse it's probably a seven furlong horse I'm okay with that that's that's good we got another graded horse it's a two-year-old that's graded always a good sign two out of two wins and I believe it retains a 113 I believe yeah hidden beauty didn't move up or down neither did Grand Sahara lock journal started at 113 off its maiden so we'll see if he can improve on that rating and become our best two-year-old. Um, but he's not up next. Next is a one-mile race for Ethereal Dreamer. We've also got a graded race here, which I believe is a grade three, for Food for Thought. So what is this? Is this a grade? That's a grade three over a mile. That could be a little less than he wants, and seven. I don't know. See, the problem is these horses look like I ran them at the right lengths, but I was told I didn't. So we're going a bit shorter, and it looks short to me. Um, so I'm not entirely comfortable. We've got two ra two races today, and we'll see exactly what they can do um, yeah, I'm kinda hoping for top threes again and at least an indication of their actual running length look at this way down there way down there Ghost Rider that's one of my former horses and it's picked up a grade 3 win I mean this is right within its wheelhouse I mean it's great that it's actually running the race that it wants to. Nothing really to write home about there. The Ghost Rider is the horse to beat, and he wasn't good enough. So, if this is where Ethereal Dreamer wants to race, then if it can't beat out Ghost Rider. I think this horse might be in trouble and we might not be keeping it so let's just see let's see where's Ghost Rider so Ghost Rider's there in the green with the orange hat Ethereal Dreamer storms out towards the front sharing the lead with Sham before taking over good placing there by Ghost Rider 
It's going to move up into contention over the next two furlongs and make this move at about one and a half furlongs. So it's in place by three. That's kind of where I want my horses. He's going to move up and he's getting ready to make his move. One and a half. There he goes. That is perfect. And that's a perfect closer as well from Private Gold. It's tight on the line, but yeah, that's how I want my horses to run. That was one of my horses way back when. An ethereal dreamer drops down to fifth. Got the distance well struggled in the grade. That's not really good. That's not really good. So I think Ethereal Dreamer might be done. Which is a shame, because it's got a lot of cruising bursts, so... That would be disappointing. That would be disappointing. We jump straight into the next race. Where competitive in this race, the only filly in the entire field of 12. So grade 2, 7 furlong for Food for Thought, who came 5th at a mile. So it's a big step up in terms of class once again, but... The distance might just suit a little better. Prating lazily there with a the blue icon. Sweating badly and agitated. Cal one. So. We've got the outside draw. We should be able to do something from this. Food for thought. It's favourite with two out of the tipsters. Three not picking a horse for this race. So I feel... A bit more comfortable in this race than the previous, especially that last one seeing Ghost Rider there and knowing how close I almost came to keeping that horse. So here's Food for Thought. Settling into the pack. Right next to the very agitated horse. I'm not sure I enjoy that. I don't really recognize any of the other horses, whoever. Three furlongs moving into contention. Behind the leader at two. Making the move at one and a half. Nope. Making the move at one. Making the move at a half. Well, well, well. Food for thought. Everything looked good. Seemed to run on past the post there. Yes, yeah, stayed on. Ooh, not good. Not good. Trip appeared to suit well. Mm, no. See, now I've got a third and fifth and a fourth and fourth for Ethereal Dreamer and Food for Thought. And it is Food for Thought indeed. Now, this horse I liked. Good cruising burst, good extra speed, good enthusiasm, good finish, good consistency. This was a horse that was supposed to do something. Great speed, maxed out bar, good acceleration, poor start, but you can recover from that in most races, especially when you're moving over a mile and beyond. So, there's a lot to like about this horse. Slightly shorter trip. Really? <sighs> okay, Ethereal Dreamer will now become a seven furlong horse in that case. Food for thought, really nice bars. Look at that, 90 speed and acceleration, 100% start. Less to like in the extra bars. And what's this one? Trip suited, well... I don't know. We're going to put Food for Thought into the next auction. Which is, funny enough, tonight. That pulls us back down to seven... Oh, seven wins today, sorry. That's nine horses now down from ten. Where are we on the breeding? Six days, 23rd. So right before that, lovely. So if we go to the day 
of the auction, skip the racing, and we're bang on where we want to be. Now that's a six-year-old. No, that's an eight-year-old who's won a grade one and two grade threes. Won a grade one last year. And since then, a couple of thirds. Second, fourth, three seconds. Didn't do well at the, at the distaff, but, you know, not, not a bad horse. A couple of bad races. I don't think I want it for breeding purposes, however, so we can ignore that. Uh, there's food for thought. She should sell quite well despite those two fourth places. Apart from that, is there anything really fun at this auction? There's a bunch of unraced two year olds you can gamble on. And I'm going to gamble. I am going to gamble. I believe that it's worth it sometimes. I don't want to go for a short horse, so Katie's Love will be the one we go for. Just to see. She might go straight back into auction and lose money, but it's fine. And food for thought is our horse going out. So Katie's Love. You can see she's going right up. Normally they break at about 2-3. And there it goes again. They stop bidding at 2-3. So that's Katie's Love. So we're just going to keep skipping each race down until we reach food for thought and see where she goes for ring minister didn't sell okay maybe I should have tried to pick that one up I did like that horse I did like the look of that mile four two year old rest in this season race as a three year old you know that that made some sense to me Where's Lights Out Angel going to go? It's slow bidding. One and a quarter. So, Expeed... What's that? Expeditious. Entrepreneur. Smithy's Sunshine. Gamaria. Tadrib. And then we're on to food for thought so this should be a nice sort of set of bids look at that two and a half million so there we go food for thought a nice horse not quite exceptional so we move on and Katie's love is nowhere near good enough so she'll just go out in the next auction this really is a big gamble to take a horse like that off the auction but uh i you know i felt there was a, a risk worth taking so in the breeding barn hidden recipes in progress starboard bow finally got got the breeding to take let's see Other money, a little money. That's a group winner. A mile five. I probably want to save that for hidden recipe to bring down the average to a mile two, a mile three range, rather than breeding up from from a mile four. But liquid sunshine would be a nice next one to do there with hidden recipe viking rose is laid back that could be a nice pairing for a mile two with starboard bow so we're gonna go there it's another quarter of a million so that money's running out fairly quickly now we've only got three more races and by this point we should start getting a few options for 
are big horses. Let's see. Group races. There's only one group race. And it's the Dubai World Cup. So that will be in the next video. And that, out of the two, I'd say that's Starboard Princess. Most definitely. And what sort of mile one? A grade one. The Santa Margarita. I might try Stealthy Lioness in that. Um... Yeah, top weight. Uh, sorry, lowest weight. Everyone's the same. Top rating, I meant to say. That's decent. That That is decent. We'll give her a shot there. And the Dubai World Cup. Now, this is going to be a tough, tough race. But lowest weight, highest rating. It's what we want to see. It is what we want to see. Uh, that's going to be a really tough race. But it's a big test to get off the fifth season. Get that off and running. So, okay, Rainbow today, you can see, is in Class 1. Lowest race, over a mile two. Let's go find that race. Let me go. Rainbow is the favourite. Now this 103 rated filly is near potential. Oop, don't want to go too close. So I'm not really worried about this field. Let's see what Rainbow wants to do here. We're still just over seven and a half furlongs out. It's a long way. The finish line will be back around this side, so keeping position just behind the leaders. I mean, that's kind of where I like my horse to run. Make sure it's in good position by three. And it kind of is moving up now a little bit, ready to challenge. Off the turn, one and a half, and go. There we go. Finishing strong, pushing out and away. Rainbow picks up a nice, easy win. Not really challenged. By far the best horse and could carry that extra weight with a bit of style. I'm fairly happy with how that went. So Katie's Love is going to be sold. And there's an unraced, there's a couple of unraced two year olds, but none with high reserves. So I'm not really. Yeah, I'm not really certain that I want to go after any of these. Especially not at a shorter distance. So let's just make sure that Katie sells for a decent price. Yeah, well, we're over two, gr two million. I'm happy with that. And let's get out of the auction. We don't need to pick anything else up. Breeding wise, look at that hidden recipe. When's our next race? Not for a little while. So we jump through there to be able to get hidden recipe. And pair him up with liquid sunshine to increase that distance. That should be an interesting pairing. Let's see what happens with them in two years time. Um... And yeah, we're going to do Lock Journal and Crimson Star. We're not going to do the other two races right now. We'll save them for the start of the next video, plus book everyone else pretty much in races. Or at least book these top four in races. So Lock Journal. He is the last of our maiden two-year-olds to run. The other two have held their rating in their second race. Lock Journal, however, were at Fauna Park in the Grade 3 5 furlong. So it's a drop down in distance, but it's a chance to join Grand Sahara as a th Grade 3 winner. 
goodness is bad in Goa. That would have been bad. That would have been really bad. So you won't be too far in. Somewhere here. There we go. So top rating, top weight, but you know, it's the default weights. There's nobody agitated or relaxed, and we've got three out of five tipsters on our side. Feeling kind of confident going into this one now. So let's get straight into it. So there we are. Tight to the rail. And Lock Journal is going to take the lead straight away. Moving out and stretching the other horses. And a mile, five mile, uh, sorry, furlong. There we go. So now it's a fight to the line. Fire Spike and Lock Journal. And it's going to be Fire Spike. Well, I hope that's the distance coming into play, because I really thought we were going to win that, but okay, we lose it by a head, 113. I mean, that could be, that could have taken a hit. So yeah, definitely a six furlong horse. It just wasn't a race to run it in. Okay, well, held this rating and it was a good run. It was a good run at wrong distance, so I'm fairly happy. Ethereal Dream has got one chance left at seven furlong. I need to keep finding these guys six furlong races. Uh, Grand Zahara maybe needs a seven furlong. Apart from that, everybody's running well. And let us now see what Crimson Star can do in the final race of this video. Now, Crimson Star, of course, is the second highest cruising burst that we've got. It's our best male. We've only got two. Lock Journal just ran. Crimson Star is the other. This is a horse I think I could enjoy breeding from. So let me find his race. There we go. The best ground may be on the near side. Okay. So the near side is what? The outside? Like near to the stand, not near to the rail? Normally it says rail side. Hmm, I think that's going to be outside. So you can you can give orders here, and there's a bunch of different stuff. Normally race handy is what I'd like to do, and maybe play around with stuff. Sometimes I pay attention to this, sometimes I just let the jockey do what he wants to do. I mean, we've got the best horse in a bad feel. We're carrying a little bit more weight, but it should not make a difference. Now, this should be the right distance for Crimson Star, and it should be another graded race. So it should be three grade threes and a grade one. Uh, sorry, and a grade two. So, there's a lot about this that I'm not sure about, but realistically, we should win this. We should win it comfortably. And let's just see. So, there we are in the forefront. We start on the outside which is good and I've told the jockey to keep him on the outside and I'm gonna hope that that is near side as in near the camera near the stands. Now he is a closer so I don't mind him running from the back that is fine he'll come into picture at some point now there he comes moving into a good position to strike by three furlongs which is now, stay on his shoulder, round the bend, as soon as you come off the bend, we go a furlong and a half, there's a furlong, and as you can see, he's comfortably driving out towards the line, in a poor field, easing up towards the line, but nowhere near enough to be caught, so, that's a grade 3 win, that's a little sum sum, we don't mind that at all. Never in doubt the trip was ideal, so... 
We've got a mile two horse on our hands. And look at that, the breeding has come into play. Starboard bow will get you on with Little Alamony, because that will get us in the correct sort of distance. Because I'm always looking for those triple crown races at about a mile two, a mile three on average. So there we go. We've got a little bit of good success. We have to sell one of our horses. Unfortunately, Food for Thought has now gone. Ethereal Dreamer is on the last chance. We've seen Rainbow and Crimson Star sort of really show what they can do in their three-year-old season. It's going to be time to really test them and see have they actually got what it takes to compete over that very tough set of races and actually claim one, two or all three of the Triple Crown races. On top of that, we've got some decently promising two-year-olds that we can work with and a couple of big races. There's a test for Lioness as she drops back down to one mile one in the Santa Margarita. And then it's off to Dubai with the Starboard Princess in the next video for the all-important Dubai World Cup. So opening races of their seasons, very tough ones, and we'll see where we go from there. But for now, we're going to leave things here. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe for more videos such as these. And uh, take care of yourselves, guys. I've been Chris Ormi. And come back to Rascalicious Farm soon for more Starters Order 6.